Hey, I'm Laren. This is Knife Steel Nerds. So sometimes I do small experiments along with somebody or on my own, and I don't really have anything to do with the data because it's not enough to do a whole article on and it just ends up sitting, which is one of the things that has happened with a small study we've done on ZTUF and its toughness or how to optimize its toughness with heat treating. So I decided, well, let's just do a whole article video about the steel and that way we can get this data out and at the same time we can learn a little bit more about ZTUF and CD number one. Now CD number one, it came first before ZTUF. CD number one is a product of Carpenter and objectively ZTUF is the better name. I mean we can all agree that CD number one is a really boring name. CD number one is what you put in your PlayStation when you're playing Final Fantasy 7, not a steel you want to buy in a knife. Now CD does stand for coining die which is slightly better than CD because coining dies need high toughness but still ZTUF way cooler name I'd much rather buy ZTUF but CD number one is out there and they're about the same thing. Now both of these steels are a modification of earlier steels that came out in the 60s and early 70s. The first one was called Vasco die made by a company called Vasco, stands for Va Vanadium Alloy Steel Company in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, and it was made as a die steel. It was advertised as being as tough as A2 and as wear resistant as D2 because those were and are very common die steels. Uh, CPM3V is a powder metallurgy version of Vasco die, which I think is not largely known. Uh, Vasco Wear was another common one. CPM Crew Wear is a CPM version of Vasco Wear. Vasco Wear got some use in knives in the late 70s and 80s from knife makers like Ted Dowell and also Gerber, the knife company. It was making knives with Vasco Wear in the late 80s, like 87. There's another version of the seal called Vasco Tough, which is maybe the closest to what Z Tough and CD Number One ended up being. I mean, they both have tough in the name, uh, but Z Tough is a little bit different. It's got a little bit higher carbon, a little bit lower vanadium. For some reason, Z Tough has a little bit higher moly than CD Number One, while CD Number One has a little bit higher chromium. I don't know how much difference that can really make. They're functionally the same steel, uh, but the vanadium was reduced. Uh, and the carbon increase to give it a little bit different properties. You know, the reduced vanadium might give it a little higher toughness. The higher carbon gives it a little higher hardness. And then the other unusual thing about these steels is the nickel addition. So the 1.5% nickel, that's similar to L6 tool steel, or there's 2% in 15 and 20. Those are two low alloy tool steels that are used in knives pretty frequently. But nickel additions are not used that much in high alloy tool steels. I'm not sure all the reasons why I can make some conjectures, but it is supposed to increase toughness, and maybe that's one of the reasons why Z Tough and CD Number One are so tough. Uh, looking at the microstructure, the volume of carbide is pretty small. We'd expect that based on the carbon content of only 0.7, and uh, the carbides are very small because it's made with powder metallurgy. The microstructure doesn't look vastly different than 3V, just a little bit less carbide. While CPM crew wear, you know, it has a little bit more carbide, a little bit more wear resistance. But we'd certainly expect this small volume of carbide and the small carbides to lead to high toughness in ZTUF, and tough is in the name. So uh, we did a new set of heat treating experiments along with Warren Kryko. He's a knife maker who heat treated these coupons. So we had done one coupon with ZTUF before where we austenitized at 1925 and tempered at 400. And the hardness and toughness was awesome. It was like 61 and a half Rockwell, really high toughness, like off the chart toughness. Uh, but we wanted to see how it looked with a range of austenitizing temperatures. You know, if you austenitize a little lower, can you get a little more toughness? If you austenitize higher, can you get a little bit higher hardness? Uh, but what we learned was that from 1925 to 2050, the hardness and toughness was basically flat. Uh, so in that way, it is relatively insensitive to heat treating. You can do a pretty wide range and still get great properties. With 1900, both the hardness and toughness went down a little bit. So in my book, Knife Engineering, originally I recommended 1925-400, uh, that being the austenitizing temperature and the tempering temperature, because our properties were so great. I mean, even if they could be improved on slightly, I know that heat treatment will work. And I think that recommended heat treatment will remain the same. So, you know, if we do go higher, we get a little bit less carbide, maybe a little bit lower wear resistance. 1925 is lower, so we can ensure 
that no grain growth occurs, but it does look like that 1% vanadium is effective in keeping the grain size small, even up to 2,050 degrees. Comparing the toughness of ZTuff with other steels, uh, it's amazing. So 61 and a half Rockwell, over 40 foot-pounds, that's better than any other steel I've tested. Even 8670 and 5160, which also get in that same range of toughness, do that at like 1 to 2 RC lower hardness. And then stainless steels, none of them really come that close. I guess AEBL and 14C28N, they're the closest. They're a little bit lower toughness, uh, though if you want a stainless steel, they're certainly steels to look at for high toughness. In terms of wear resistance, of course, that small volume of carbide means its wear resistance is not particularly high. And in these Catra tests that I did with a CD number one coupon, uh, it had similar wear resistance to AEBL or A8 mod, a little bit better than A2 and 5200. Now, that's not bad. I mean, if you look at 8670, uh, its wear resistance is way lower than that steel. So you get a little bit of wear resistance with your super high toughness, so a little bit better balance of properties than some of those low alloy steels like 8670 and 5160. In terms of corrosion resistance, I've never tested this steel. I haven't tested non-stainless steels that much. It hasn't been a priority for me, not something I've really looked at in the past. But I did find a set of tests done by knife maker Scott Larimore along with Kelly W. And they reported their results on the Bushcraft USA forums. And so Scott, he, he treated a bunch of coupons from various steels. Then he ground them and he sent them to Kelly, who lives in a humid place. And so he just left them out in the elements. And then they looked at them to see which ones rusted. Now there's a bunch of steels here. And also some of them were given a low temperature temper of around 400 degrees and a high temperature temper of around 1,000 degrees. Now typically I recommend a low temperature temper because it leads to both better corrosion resistance and better toughness in several steels I've tested, including CPM Crewwear, which we already discussed is in a similar category of steel to ZTuff and CD number one. So for this test, you know, low alloy steels like 8670, 6150, 5200, 80 CRV2, they all rusted very rapidly in this test. Even high alloy tool steels with 5% chromium in them like M2 or A2 or uh, let's see another one, um, M4, they all rusted as well. Uh, but CD number one, ZTuff 3V, uh, they all had little or no corrosion in this test. The CD number one actually did slightly better than ZTuff. I don't know if that's because its chromium is a little bit higher or if it's just the randomness of this test, you know, if the ZTuff coupon wasn't finished quite as well or if the ZTuff coupon got a little more rain out in the elements. Uh, but another thing to note in this test is that the, there was a big difference between low and high temper. So some people want to say that there's not that big of a difference between the two. But you can see that like the low temper 3V coupon did much better than the high temper 3V coupon. Same with CD number one. The high temper coupon has a bunch of rust on it. The low temper coupon, almost none. So the corrosion resistance is pretty good in this steel. We could certainly call it a semi-stainless, just like D2 or CPM Crewwear. With that 7-8% chromium, it does make a difference versus a low alloy steel or even a high alloy steel with 5% chromium. So anyway, those are some thoughts on CD number one and ZTuff and some more information on heat treating. Maybe we'll even do some more in the future, compare the low and high temper or something, or see if we can get a little more hardness with a 350 degree temper instead of 400. And maybe the toughness will still remain high. We'll have to see. But thanks to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. Thank you to my new supporters. You know, with this money, we can do more experiments in the future. So thanks, everybody, for supporting Knife Steel Nerds. And until next time, bye-bye.